so real quick before you did that did Um, mm -hmm. And your your origin story, like how did you get into? Is that he? Uh, he made an age joke the last time we were. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use that kuka. Two is it two million or so? It's something like that. Yeah. Right, but to your point, yeah, like. What that like, is a big deal. I mean, you know, yeah. like you were just talking about Nine Mile. I mean, yeah, as little as those little nuances, but um, going after, north, going north of Nine Mile is better than south of Nine Mile, right? And, and that's like it. It's the same thing in Warren. That that's what they actually have a special thing for it in Warren. South of Nine Mile is considered South Warren. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so I mean, yeah, the location the, and proximity matters. Yes. Stuff like that. But um, yeah, I mean, that's the other thing as far as getting to know what a deal looks like. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people like even myself, like got into wholesaling and real estate, probably from watching YouTube or yeah. Facebook, Instagram, you know, whatever, even TikTok apparently. But um, a lot of things you see on there are the people that have been doing it for 10, 15 years, right? Or whatever. Um, gurus. And you see a lot of them who wholesale statewide, nationwide, um, things like that. Yeah. That's cool. That's good for them. I mean, maybe one day I'm there and I'm wholesaling nationwide. But um, I think what a lot of people forget about is playing in your own sandbox in your own backyard. Like, tell me a location yeah. you don't know better than your own backyard. Exactly. And, and you're that, able to make a decision quicker than some out of towner that's just kind of comparing comps yeah. all across town. You're like, uh, no. Like, do you know what's across nine mile? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know? they don't, so, I mean, that right there has gotten me much more comfortable. Like, someone sends me a deal now as far as Genesee yeah. County. I'm like, what cross streets? I'm like, what do they want for? I'm like, eh, probably a little high, but I'll check it out. You know? Yeah. Versus having no idea. Or an out of town. Or like, all right, well, let me go back and run my numbers. Like, I don't need to. Like, I mean, maybe, but... Um, I can just tell you hot or cold and then I'll be able to take a look at it. So that honestly has, has been able to have me be much more efficient, I guess. Most, most definitely. And that's one thing that, um, you know, I look at and that's the reason why I tell people they're like, well, uh, do you do other states? Do you do other markets? And, and I'm like, you know, I'll look at something, but my my focus is the tri-county area like, yeah i'll give my general real estate knowledge but i yeah. mean tell you if maybe you're working on a deal or not but i just it's not i mean you gotta think about your your, your hours and day and the time that you're yeah. spending on things and i'm not saying to cancel everything out but i mean i mean like i specialize in oakland macomb and wayne county you know i'm genesee if county I, and i've picked if I, four or five exactly. in oakland. and and i've actually come to you and anything on in Genesee County, I'm like, hey, I don't know this area. Could you tell me? Like, yeah, this that's how, I mean, that's that's you know? how I do it. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, knowing your knowing your stuff is key. Um, honestly, I think this year, um, if I I haven't done anything different really, or okay. um, besides adding texting, but I mean, I've been marketing this year to the last three, two years prior, um, you know, Genesee County. And now this year, a little bit last year to, to Oakland a little bit, but okay. um, I mean, the difference this year is that I'm, I'm just going deeper in my own market. And yeah. when I go deeper, I now have seen a lot of these same pro you know, if it's not the same property, it might be on the same street or neighborhood. And I know what deals were were and were not selling for around there. And um, I guess just like longevity, which I haven't yeah. been doing it for a long time at all. I've been doing it the speck of time. But I mean, just three years of being consistent, I'm like, holy crap, you know, what will five and 10 years of consistency look like right. as far as just, just uh, you know, sniffing out opportunity in, in Genesee County? Um, so it's just, I guess it pays to stick around and, um, you know, go deep in your own market first. And I find it funny that a lot of people from out of town, they, they look at it, they're like, you can get a house for that price. And I'm like, yeah, but it's not in the best area. But yeah. if, you, if that's what you want, if, if you're, if the only thing you're looking for is cash flow, cheap properties, yeah, cheap properties, by all means. Now you still have to 
my biggest thing is is this i tell people anybody who's new coming into the area going into detroit going into flint you need to have a good property manager that that is good in that area yeah i mean all the houses i even wholesale to um like i've never bought anything in flint everything i've wholesaled in flint nine times out of ten has been to a property management company um or somebody who is out of town who i refer them to uh, the same property management company right so and that's another thing is is getting to know these people getting going to these meetups getting you know i i get probably about three or four property management companies like talk to me all the time hey you know like i know them off the top of my head i have them in my you know in my um in my phone and everything and they're good people they're they know what they're doing and and if if a, a buyer or somebody they have buyers them, yeah they have and that yeah that's another thing they do have buyers so I send them my deals and I get them added to my buyers list. Property so. management property management companies um, are also licensed. Um, yeah, you know, so uh, you know, more than likely they have buyers and you can work with them. You don't have to pay them a wholesale fee necessarily, but you might be able to pay them a thousand dollars. You know, every single time because you can do volume with them or whatnot. I mean, there's whatever carve out your own relationship, but I mean, yeah, uh, opportunity is definitely there. And that, and that's another thing is is that when you talk to them, guess what? Some of their um, their property when I you know that's distressed or tired landlords or whatever, they come up. Yeah, yeah they're gonna come to you know. Yeah. So it is. so things like that. Now, mm-hmm. um, tell me a little bit about you know how uh, you know when you're talking to a seller and you know, they're giving you a little bit of a resistance, I guess, you know, what is your strategy behind? Do you try to be as transparent as possible? Like, I, like, I, mean, I guess run me through a little bit of a, when somebody's trying to be like, Oh, you're a damn wholesaler. And, and, you know, like I've actually had that a couple of times. I had one guy say, um, I don't want to sell to investors at all. I want to sell to somebody who's going to, live in the house that i mean that person there's nothing i do with that i mean yeah good for you, that's fine um i'm not here to convince you or uh waste your nor my time but exactly um, to answer your question on that uh so honestly there's a lot of things i've changed up in the last six months if, if anything this has been my process so my um process is is a little bit more lengthy um as far as the initial cold call, cold text, we bring after that, they push them over. The first conversation I have with you is just a follow up call. Hey, my mm-hmm. partner, we've got see on your property here. Do you have any interest in selling that property now or in the near future? Oh, you do? Okay. And I go into telling them, I basically set the stage. Every single conversation we have with them. So we have, we have a first, it's a follow up call. Second, it's a process call. So, mm-hmm process is initially us asking you the four questions trying to dig for that motivation etc etc if you are able to walk through that whole process call with them after that we formulate the urgency and the next call is the offer call Mm -hmm. but every single every single one of those calls all three four of those calls is basically the first thing i'm letting you know is the time the call will be hey do you have five maybe ten minutes um, for this okay um, I give you the agenda and the reason and then the opportunity to say no. And that's on every single call. So it forms basically, it lets you, it, it, it's like the thing I hate when people cold call me about whatever is that you call me out of the blue. You don't tell me why you're calling. You don't tell mm-hmm. me who you're with. And you don't even tell me like how long we're going to be on this call and the agenda. You just start firing questions away at me. And I'm like, you didn't even ask me if I was, you know, if I had a couple minutes or if I wanted to ask your question, answer your questions, right. Any questions they ask you. And then why you're even asking me these questions? Like, you know, cause then I, I mean, I feel defensive. Like I'm going to give you some answer that you're going to use that information to use on me. Mm-hmm. Um, every single call. Um, and I, I'm, I don't know if you're looking for this in depth of a process, but yeah. I've, I've learned that through the, the, the process, if you make a solid process and I'm not saying you have to make it a long process, but the commitment from them 
the level of commitment obviously is deeper and deeper the more you go down that path with them. And every single time I go on that call, it's basically that, you know, time, agenda, uh, the reason I'm calling and, build, and then give you the option to tell me no, um, letting you know that's okay. Um, it gives people a better frame of mind and brings their guard down because they know what's coming and what it is and the reason you're asking the questions. And so I would tell you honestly, um, the only resistance I really get is on phone call one. Yeah. And then phone call two, which phone call two is that if we're taking you down that road or you're just going to get put on to, I don't know, a six month follow up. Um, Got it. Because you made it to the second phone call. So we'll just follow up in six months. Um, you know, if we get to the third call and something happens, like, I don't know, that, it, something fell out or whatever. But yep. um, I mean, that third, fourth, that third and fourth phone call is usually to figure out what kind of offer we're going to formulate. And the only reason you're getting to the fourth call is if we're giving you an offer on the third call, we're trying to figure out the only other thing that is if you're able to make a decision right now, is there anything right now that's holding you back? Um, or we don't even ask holding you back, but um, you know, once you got the offer, you know, what's the next thing you have to figure out if anything. Yeah. And if they tell us, Oh, well, I, you know, I got, you know, whatever, wait for probate, you know, whatever. Okay. So we know that even right now, if we wanted to, and the perfect price came, you can't sell. We're not giving you a price. Right. We're putting you on a consistent follow up for three months to become your best friend so that when the time comes, it's not a question of if we're working together. It's just a question of how we're going to work together. And if I'm going to list your property, I'm going to buy it myself, sub to you, cash, wholesale it, flip it, whatever. Yeah. Um, and so that's honestly how I've been able to be a little more efficient with my time, knock down the resistance at the yeah. end. Because I everybody hates it and you work on this deal forever and then you get to the end and it's like we're way off on price or they have some objection that we never even talked about. And it just it knocks all that stuff out of the way to that the point yeah. where i mean you know i'm going to your house because we're just we're going we're buying it yeah so that's one thing that i do um actually when when i follow up hey you know like hey my my um my partner actually gave you a call uh the other day about your property she said that your interest in selling it do you have a this is just a follow-up call on that uh do you have a few minutes to talk mm -hmm. if they say no great when's the next time i can reach out to you yeah you know i always they, ask them hey if you were me what would when would when would you follow up with you next like when would yeah. be a you know, good time for me to actually reach out to you then <laughs> yeah. and but, yeah even if they say no i'm not selling right now i say okay great is it okay if I follow up with you in say three months or a month? Yep. And if I if I say a month and they say, well, better give it six months. Okay, great. I'm scheduling a follow back up in six months. Yeah, I always okay. ask, and I always leave it up to them too to see what they say instead of asking, "Is it okay if I give you a call in six months?" Instead of them saying yes or no, I always try to get ask them to get an answer out of them. I was just like, you know, okay, cool. You know, hey, if you were me. You know, is there a time that you maybe follow up with you in the future? And they might oh, say next yeah. month. Oh, shoot. Okay. Because, um, like, you're thinking six, but they might be thinking, like, not right now because literally at the moment they got three calls that day. And yeah. two weeks later they can get a call from whatever. And they're like, yeah, taxes are due or probate's done. They're like, oh, I thought that was going to be three months. And it changes. So, I mean, I always, I, I mean, I used to always say, okay, is it okay if I call you in six months? Thinking because if I push the envelope that far out, they're okay with it. Instead yeah. of me saying, can I call you in 30 days? No. Like, <laughs> um, so I always just say, if you were me, you know, is there in the future that would be okay to follow up? And they might say, yeah, you know. And whatever they say, I always bring it, I always set Chop it for it a little bit early. Yeah. You know, do it like 25% less. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. So, sure. Yeah. Um, so, like, if they say, okay, call me back in next month, I'm, I'm scheduling a call back in three weeks. Yeah, it's, that's about what we do is that two and a half mid-mark, you know, yeah. two and a half weeks on a Wednesday or depending when we talk to you, three weeks, something like that. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. Um, now you said you have uh, virtual assistants. Are they both? Are they out of the Philippines at the moment? Both in the Philippines, both. I don't know how that goes as far as education, but college degrees, uh, okay. both have worked for uh, Verizon, uh, BP Oil, uh, you know, all, uh, uh, all state insurance, wow. uh, or farmers insurance, I think. Um, 
But they've got great English. They know our culture as far as a little bit of slang, whatever terminology. Yep. Uh, and they've had interaction with real estate. So I got fortunate. Um, my VA actually recruited the other VA. I paid him <laughs> a little bonus to go find some friends and I interviewed them. Um, cause I like, I, he's been with me for a month and a half and I'm like, or a year and a half. And I'm like, well, if he, whoever he's hanging out with has to be a little bit like him as far yeah. as just, he works hard. He's loyal and I treat him well. I know his family's name, everything like that, you know? Um, so I'm really good to him and I have culture in our, in our, um, I mean, as much culture you can have with VAs, but I mean, yeah. you know, like he's not just some VA that works for us, like, whatever. Like, I don't know. I treat him, I treat him better than probably most people. Honest to God. There was once a day that I would pray for you. I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too. Sneaking looks up and down from across the room. 